you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? You looking at? I know what I'm looking at. What are you looking at? Mm, well, I know what I'm looking at. Clearly you don't, because you're not telling me. What are you looking at? I think I know what I'm looking at. What are you looking at? I know what I'm looking at. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? I mean, what's your focus in life? Life, after all, is incredibly short and you don't want to waste it focusing on the wrong thing. The average lifespan for a male is only 79 years and an average lifespan for a female is only 83 years. So we need to make sure that our lives count for something, that they have true meaning, that we don't just get stuck in the rut of just earning money through a nine to five job, waiting for retirement. Think of it this way, if God exists, then this life here on earth isn't all there is. There's an eternity ahead waiting for us and we need to be preparing for it now. On the other hand, if God doesn't exist, then life has no ultimate meaning and the universe just popped into existence one day from absolutely nothing. Hmm. Common sense tells us that God exists. The universe declares it, nature declares it, our DNA declares it, and the finely tuned laws of nature declare it too. And most of all, our conscience declares it. God exists and he wants us to have a relationship with him because he knows what's at stake. He knows the two possible places in eternity where we can end up. So many people today are focused on the wrong things things that have zero eternal value. They're focused on their careers, they're focused on their pensions, they're focused on their holidays, or they're focused on the weekend. Some people are focused on football and rugby, whilst other people are focused on looking good and having the latest pair of shoes. All of these things are just distractions that keep us from looking to the real source of life, joy, and peace. Jesus said it this way, what good is it if a person gains the whole world and loses their very soul? I'm sure that most of us would like to win the lottery, but what if someone were to offer you a million pounds in exchange for both of your eyes? Would you take it? Of course you wouldn't, because your eyes are precious to you and are of infinite more value than a million pounds. How much more then is your eternal soul worth? Shouldn't you be doing everything in your power right now to protect it? The Holy Bible says that we have all broken God's law and have fallen short of his righteous standard. We only have to look at a few of the Ten Commandments to realise that we've blown it. For instance, you shall not lie, you shall not steal, you shall not misuse the name of God, you shall not covet someone else's property. I could go on. But you get the point. We're all guilty of breaking a holy God's law. And because he is a good and righteous judge, our sins must be punished. The Holy Bible says that the punishment for our sins is being shut out of God's presence in eternity. It's like an eternal prison for criminals. Jesus describes hell as a place of great darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we all deserve to go there because we have rebelled against the holy God. And our conscience tells us so, even though our pride doesn't like to admit it. The good news is that God sent his Messiah Jesus to come to the earth and to suffer our punishment in our place upon the cross. And if you want a clear picture of hell, just look at Jesus upon the cross, hanging there in distress and agony, in complete blackness and crying out, my God, my God, why have you left me? You see, Jesus suffered the torments of hell for you in your place because he loves you and because he wants God to pardon you. He suffered so that you would never have to. That's the justice of God and the love of God. Today, if you want to be forgiven of your sins and if you want to receive the free gift of eternal life, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to repent. And that means to change your mind to change your focus, 
to stop living for this world and start preparing for the next. And number two, you have to trust in Jesus. You have to take him at his word when he says that it is finished. Your sins have been paid for by his own blood. So can I encourage you today to get a Bible and start reading the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Obey what you read and spend a few minutes each day talking to God because he loves you and he wants to hear from you. God bless. So what are you looking at? I'm looking at Jesus. Oh. Well that's alright then. I know that that's alright then. I know that you know that that's alright then. Mm -hmm. Well I know that you know that that's alright then. Okay. That's, that's alright then.